Hey guys, I'm Eric with Extreme Terrain. In this video, we're gonna do a quick review and install of this Mammoth two inch front leveling kit for all 2007 and later Toyota Tundras. Now this kit's really gonna be ideal for the Tundra owner out there who wants to take the factory rake out of their truck stance and maybe add a slightly larger tire size. Now, what do I mean by factory rake? I'm talking about that slightly nose down, leaning forward kind of stance that most trucks come with from the factory. And that is mainly to compensate for what most truck owners do, which is load up their bed with cargo that's gonna weigh down the back end. So to prevent that from sagging when you are loaded up with cargo, they kind of put in that factory rake. However, if that's not a concern for you when you want to level out your truck stance, this is a very affordable way to do that. Now, lift and leveling kits really come in a variety of configurations from the more basic kits like the one we're talking about here today to the more involved kits that replace everything from struts to springs to control arms, you name it, everything underneath your truck. So really, it really depends on how much you're looking to spend and what you want to do with your truck. With this kit, you should have no problem fitting a 33 inch tire on your Tundra. Now this spacer kit from Mammoth is made from CNC machined aluminum with a black anodized finish. It definitely falls into the more basic category. Now the upside to that is the price. This kit currently comes in just under $100, making it a more affordable way to get that lift in your truck. Now, as far as the installation goes, guys, I'm giving it a very solid two out of three wrenches on our difficulty meter. There are some tricky things we're gonna be doing. And of course, anytime you are jacking up your truck and using jack stands, you wanna take precautions to make sure that you're doing that all very safely. But as far as tools are concerned, nothing too exotic. You probably have most of what you need already in your tool chest. So let's go ahead, take a look at the tools we're gonna to use and go ahead with the installation. All right guys, the tools we're gonna use for this installation include an electric impact wrench, a pneumatic impact driver, a flathead screwdriver, a hammer, a pair of needle nose pliers, a socket extension, a swivel socket, 10, 12, 14, 16, 19, 21, 22, and 24 millimeter sockets, a pair of hand socket wrenches, a dead blow, and a pry bar. All right guys, now once you have your truck safely lifted and supported and test it, make sure it's not gonna move on you, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Basically all we're gonna do is just the bare minimum we need to do to get components out of the way so we can remove our strut and go from there. So go ahead and grab a 19 mil socket and let's get started. All right guys, now with your 19 mil socket, we're gonna go ahead and remove this bolt here that's part of our sway bar end link. All right guys, now we're gonna have to disconnect our ball joint here, but before we can do that, you gotta remove this cotter pin. So go ahead and grab some needle nose pliers. All right guys, now you need a 19 millimeter socket for the castle nut here for your upper ball joint. And once you have that loosened, we're not gonna remove it all the way. You wanted a few threads on, because we're gonna tap right here with a hammer and see if we can get our ball joint to come loose. All right guys, now go ahead and grab a pry bar. We're gonna stick it in underneath the hinge pin for our upper control arm, and we're gonna pull down on this to relieve the tension here so we can just kind of take the nut off by hand. All right guys, now you have four 14 millimeter nuts that we're gonna take off the top here, these studs that are holding the top part of our strut in place. These two back ones are probably gonna be hard for you to see. If you're blessed with a relatively clean truck like we are, once you break them loose, you should be able to spin them off by hand.
right guys, now we're gonna undo the clamp up here that's holding our brake line to the upper control arm just to give ourselves a little bit of slack. Use a 10 millimeter socket for All right guys, now to get our skid plate off, first we're gonna go after this locking uh, clip right here and these two bolts. So just have a flathead screwdriver, pull this one out. Now for these two bolts, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket. All right guys, now we have three more bolts. They're kind of recessed up in these holes here and here and one on the back. You're gonna need a 12 millimeter socket for those. All right guys, now last, once you have all that hardware removed, go ahead and push up on the front and to the left. A couple of recessed hooks up top there that are kind of snagging the front end of your skid plate on. All right guys, now we're gonna use a 24 mil socket here just to loosen up this nut, and we're gonna do the same thing for the other uh, bolt that's holding the bottom of our control arm to the frame. We're just gonna loosen them, we don't wanna remove them. All right guys, now we're gonna re remove this uh, nut here that's the bolt that's holding on the bottom of our strut to the control arm. You're gonna need a 22 millimeter socket for this. All right guys, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the bolt. All right guys, now we have that lower bolt out. You should be able to lift the strut up a little bit to get it unseated down below, drop it down a little bit, and we're gonna pivot it out the top and pull it out. All right guys, now we have our factory strut out on the table here. We got our new spacer block. This is gonna go on over top of studs like that and then we're just going to use the factory nuts to tighten down and attach and then we're going to use the hardware included in the kit once we get the strut up inside these bolts are going to come down from the top through the top of the shock tower bracket into our spacer block here and that's how it's going to get mounted up so right now we'll go ahead and get these started And to tighten these up, use a 14 millimeter socket. All right guys, now we have our spacer block mounted on the top of our strut. Let's go ahead and put it back in place. Guys, now we have a bolt started there. Let's get the other ones started. All right, now using our floor jack, we're going to lift underneath the lower control arm and raise it up just enough so that the holes line up with our control arm and the bottom of the strut. 
little snug, guys. You might have to tap it in a little bit. Use a dead blow if you need to. Throw the nut back on. Just have it hand tight for now. We're gonna raise the lower control arm up a little bit more and tighten up our bolts up top. All right, to tighten these up, guys, we're gonna use a 16 millimeter socket. All right guys, now we're gonna to continue to raise this up so we can reconnect our turning knuckle to the upper ball joint. All right guys, now as you're lifting the lower control arm, make sure you're not lifting off of your floor jacks, but once you get it up close, feed in the uh, ball joint into the spindle here, and pull it down with a pry bar, and get your castle on it. All right guys, now go ahead and get your factory bolt for your sway bar end link. Let's get it in there. All right, go ahead and tighten it up uh, using a 19 millimeter socket. All right, now we're gonna retighten the bolts for our lower control arm that we loosened earlier. Again, a 24 millimeter socket for these. All right, now we're gonna retighten the bolt that's uh, attached to the lower end of our strut using a 19 millimeter socket. All right, now we're gonna retighten the castle nut here in the top of our steering knuckle using a 19 millimeter socket. And you just have to make sure that you have a gap there that you can put your cotter pin through. All right, reinsert the cotter pin. All right, guys, now we're gonna reattach the bracket that secures our brake lines. And tighten down with a 10 millimeter socket. All right guys, everything we just showed you on the driver's side front there, go ahead and repeat that on the passenger side. And once you're all done with that, we can go ahead and replace our skid plate. All right, once you got it lined up on the front here, guys, go ahead and take one of these bolts and we're gonna start it back here. Okay, and for those bolts, guys, they were 12 millimeters. Now, go ahead and grab these bolts. These are 10 millimeters. And be sure you don't over torque these guys because you're drilling a, a, a steel screw into plastic. And replace your pop clip. All right guys, that pretty much wraps up the installation. Just a couple of things to remember, make sure you're torquing everything to spec. And it is recommended that within 500 miles that you get a four wheel alignment done on your vehicle. And that of course is anytime you have any steering or suspension work done.
All right, guys, that wraps up this look at this mammoth two-inch front leveling kit for all 2007 and later Toyota Tundras. And of course, for all things Tundra, keep it right here at ExtremeTerrain.com.